What up, what up, what up? Hey, I'm going to do a live video on this, and this is for the six people probably that message me. Uh, so for the half a dozen people that message me to please do a live video on what's going to take place in the Chad Daybill preliminary hearing, this is for you six people. For the other whatever amount of people watching you should thank those you should thank those who messaged me and said please do this video well that happens tomorrow so chad daybell goes before his preliminary hearing don't worry they're going to broadcast it live i may even do a watch party if i'm not even uh if i'm not doing something else if i'm not fishing or somewhere else i have you know that my wife right now is floating the river now it's an all girls little float trip, but I was this close to crashing it. And she was hesitantly giving me permission to crash her float trip. She didn't really want me to, but she gave me permission to, and I still, I was like, okay, I'll do this video instead. Instead of going on a freaking river float trip, I'm doing this video. So there you go. Plus the six people who asked me to, plus my wife, she didn't really want me to go. She would have allowed it, but it would have been allowed, not necessarily wanted. So um, Chad Daybell goes to his preliminary hearing. Let me, spoiler alert, if you're just joining your, if you're one of those people that's like, get to the point. All right, I've been here for three minutes. You can leave now. Nothing. Nothing is going to happen at the preliminary hearing. Now, you're going to get probable cause for them to arrest Chad Daybell. That could be as little as we found bodies on your property. It could be a lot more, and there are going to maybe be some witnesses, probably cops, probably cop witnesses, even though others have been subpoenaed, there may be some statements from others, but this is just a probable cause hearing being held in a magistrate court. It will then, if there's probable cause, it'll be shifted into the district court and we start the arraignment hearing where then we'll hear uh, guilty, not guilty, how you're going to plead, all that stuff. Tomorrow's court hearing is going to be a very, very condensed version. It could be two hours, three hours long. It could be 20 minutes long. It could be an hour long. There's a, there's a lot of different things that could happen because of one cameras are there. So I have a real strong suspicion that the prosecutors are going to bring forth their a game in front of the cameras. And so, cause the whole world is literally watching this case. And so I don't think we're not going to get any sort of dramatics. I don't think we're not going to get any sort of detail. I think we'll get some details. I think they're going to share a little bit more than they normally would because they have a lot more to come. Right. Uh, this will be a very small, condensed version. Uh, like, again, a trial could take two weeks. A preliminary hearing could take two hours. All right? Maybe. If we're lucky, we're going to get two hours. It could take 20 minutes. This is just to show probable cause, arrest, hearing. Then it'll be moved over to a district court. That could happen at this preliminary hearing where they say, hey, we're going to move this over to district court. Or it could be put off to another hearing to then move it over to district court. There's so many variables. What you have to understand is the process is going to take a while. The judicial system doesn't move at anyone's specific time frame. Boom. If you're a short timer and you can only got five minutes, get out of here. 
You're not going to hear anything different. I'm just going to expand for the next two hours. I'm just kidding. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, how long this video goes. That's a summary of what's happening tomorrow. Now, what's happened up to this point? What got what's getting us to this point? Well, we know a lot. They found bodies of missing kids in this dude's backyard. So are they going to bring forth some of that evidence? Absolutely. For the camera. Absolutely. For the camera. This is concrete. Can't take it away evidence. Chad, do you own this house? Did you reside in this house? Have you resided in this house? Oh yeah, by the way, did you send a message to your so-and-so about this message that said you did something on this particular date? We've already got a lot of this info. This is probable cause. They've already, the damn cops, the damn cops laid it out. They've already laid all of this out. Now, this is going to happen in front of a magistrate court that then is going to move into. Oh, but the there are witnesses. Yes, yes, yes. Subpoenaed witnesses. But those witnesses are most likely, most likely police officers. The reason I'm going to tell you this is because the defense doesn't, I mean, the, the prosecutors don't have to give their whole ballpark. They don't need to give the whole game. This ain't reasonable doubt. This is probable cause, right? Trial, two-week trial, witnesses come out of everywhere. Witnesses from everywhere. We're going to have witnesses. Now, what will probably happen is police officers will testify to witness statements. I can explain this very simply. And if police officers want to testify in detail to witness statements, then police officers can testify in detail to witness statements. The reason is, is because we've seen, I've seen this happen personally in the Patrick Frazee case where Greg Slater, CBI investigator, um, testified to Crystal Lee Kinney's testimony. Crystal Lee Kinney didn't testify at the preliminary hearing. Greg Slater, police officer, testified at the preliminary hearing. Now, they can, they can bring in whoever they want to as witnesses. I'm not telling you in this particular case. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, by the way. These, who knows what's going to happen in the court? Because the, But I'm telling you, preliminary hearings, it would be... It would be real unlikely for the prosecutors to drop the bombshells. If they got bombshells to drop, they're going to wait those bombshells for trial. They need enough for probable cause. They don't need enough for reasonable doubt. There's a difference between the reasonable doubt evidence and the probable cause evidence. People, that's what the biggest question is, is yes, ma'am. Yes. Get your sister to help you if she needs to. Okay, you can make it. You're such a big girl. Quit growing up. So there's a... I know you would, girl. There's a huge difference between the reasonable doubt and the probable cause. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it's going to reveal some stuff. And yes, witnesses still may come forward. I think those witnesses will be cops... If it's someone other than cops, then it would be someone that is um, in the judicial system of some sort, witness experts, stuff like that. They're not going to rely upon family and friends and real key witnesses to come forward at a preliminary hearing. They don't need it. They do absolutely do not need it for the reasonable doubts or probable cause stuff. Reasonable doubt, they'll bring them forward. So, it's going. It could again. A lot of stuff can come forward because it depends on what the cops are going to say when they um, when they uh, when the cops come forward and talk. The cops can say a lot or say a little, right? And so it'll just depend on what the cops say in in that time. Um, now, once this happens, they, they go through the freaking, this preliminary hearing, two hours, boom, it'll probably be moved over 
if he get if the judge says judge says okay boom probable cause we found dead bodies in your backyard that's probable cause you probably know something you're probably not telling us on top of the fact that you and your girl ran around the damn world I eh, ran over to Hawaii uh, for a little, all this craziness going on meanwhile the kids are in your backyard you probably knew something brother um, brother Chad Daybell uh, <laughs> so he'll probably end up getting. They'll, they'll probably seal it off, probable cause. Then they'll move it over to the district court. I don't know who the district court is. This is just a damn formality. It's probably the same courthouse, the same everything. It'll just be in a district courthouse instead of like a municipal or magistrate court, uh, uh, like a magistrate court. And so over there, that's where he'll come to his arraignment. He'll have to plead guilty, not guilty. He'll have to, um, at that point, the defense never, the defense never has to put forth evidence. So don't think Chad Daybell's uh, defense attorneys are going to be jumping up, giving a bunch of evidence on why he didn't do this or how he wasn't involved. He's, they're not going to be pointing the finger at Lori. They're not going to, they may lay some foundation stuff, but they're going to save all of that for the trial, 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 jury. This is all formality. People are going to say, why is this taking so long? And the, the fact is, this is just how the court system works. They do not move at your rate. They move at a snail's pace at best. Y'all probably cussing at me or something. Am I on mute? Who knows? Oh. Let me see here. Yeah. All right. It's always about little evidence as possible to keep in jail. Three FBI agents testifying, the ones that were on the scene. Perfect. Yeah, it's going to be cops. What is this? I don't know who this 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 craziness is, but I'll see you tomorrow, brother. How are you talking about Trump? Come on, brother. Do you think they will try to pin it all on Alex to try to save themselves? That's a good one there. Why not? Now, tough to do. Tough to do. One, because Chad offered a story of why Alex would have been there or why the dirt would have been moved around. I actually think they could have pinned it on Alex anyway. All it would have taken was his cell phone, right? If they wanted to really cover their tracks, like, hey, hopefully none of us get caught. Well, Chad, take Alex's cell phone, bury the bodies. Chad is the one who used to be the, the grave digger. Alex wasn't the grave digger. Chad was the grave digger. So in my opinion, if there are bodies buried and three people are involved, Chad, Lori, and Alex. First of all, Chad Daybell has a resume of burying bodies. This used to be his job. On top of that, he's the one selling stories. I mean, I'm no prosecuting attorney, but if I was, hey, prosecutors, you watching? You want to use this argument? You go in there and you just plop them out. Chad Daybell, grave digger. Bodies found dug in a grave on Chad Daybell's property. Hmm. Judge, do we have probable cause? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, press. Thanks for showing up. I'm out. Dad with the phone has shown probable cause, right? That's how easy it is to put probable cause. Are they going to point at Alex? Why not? Why not point at Alex? Why not just point and say, the brother did it? Oh, yeah, he's dead. Oh, yeah, where's the girl? Call Tyson, call Tyson Draper up. He'll tell you about the girl who killed Alex.
Chad Daybell kind of looks like a zombie anyway. I went back and watched his last hearing where they were going to not allow cameras. Kudos, Judge. Kudos, Judge, for allowing cameras in this case. Now, hopefully they allow it through the entire trial. I mean, hopefully. We are on. Now, here's the dude. Oh, let me, let me, oh, shout out to the camera guys. Man, y'all need a tag. I don't even know who the news organization is that got the approval for cameras. But listen up. Please listen to Dad with the phone. This is something that, one, I'm an expert at, and two, I've actually lived through it in the courtroom. Do not zoom into documents on any table. I don't give up if it's the damn clerk something. I don't. There, there is no document. We don't need to read any documents. In the courtroom, you want to put those up, those documents up when they get, if we can read documents, cameraman, even if it's blurry, even if it's blurry, don't do it because a, a precedent has already been set that if you zoom in, even if you're white balancing your camera, boom, they'll kick the cameras out as fast as they allow them in. And it will be, it's already a court precedent. There's already the defendant, the defendant gets up there and says, I can't worry about my documents and trying to defend my client, trying to cover my mouth. So do follow the rules, make sure news organizations, make sure you got somebody running camera in the courtroom that's been in the courtroom that ain't going to have shaky hands because they're a little nervous because it's high profile, high pressure, dude, because it happens. It happened. These little bitty towns, East Idaho news, nobody news. Nobody knew about East Idaho news until Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow killed somebody. Nobody knew nothing about East Idaho news before these two. And then they're going to put some rookie news dude in there with a camera and he's going to screw it for the world. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a little rant. It was a rant on my part because that's how the Patrick Frazee case never was able to be recorded because of a small little excuse. So... Oh, check the cops out. Watch the cops going by. Going to make my live video right now. Yo. That's about, I don't know how many times they've come by on camera, but I know they've come by my house at least four or five times this morning. I'm trying to read y'all's comments. Sorry. I got off on a rant a little bit. Let me see. Did I cover everything I wanted to cover on what's happening tomorrow? Did you get an understanding? We're two, three hours. We could get some witnesses. We might not. Probably cop witnesses. Uh, probable cause. Think probable cause. Don't think reasonable doubt. Um, is that put it in enough layman terms for the people, the six people that asked? <laughs> uh, uh, prosecution in cases won't won't speak so we're not going to get we very likely will not get too many press conferences now in Patrick Frazee's case we got a few press conferences so we might get some it, it, again this really depends on how much they want to get in front of the cameras because they can get in front of the cameras just to say hey guys we can't say anything in front of the cameras Right. And so depending on the prosecution and depending on how much press they want out of this thing will depend on how much information we get. Now, they could come in front of the cameras and they could say, hey, listen, you can ask your questions, but we can't make statements. We can only say what the court has already said. So they may reiterate what was said in the courtroom. They may say, yes, there was a statement entered because it's on open record in the courtroom. And so there's some there's some opportunity for press conferences depending on how much these east idaho 
um, pressers that, I mean, these district attorney people want to, whatever, Madison County, wherever this is going to be at. And this really holds true for both Lori Vallow and for Chad Daybell's preliminary hearings. Remember, we're not going to get a guilty or not guilty. We're not going to get any information from the defendants. They're not going to, their burden of proof isn't on them. It's not even in the trial. It's not even on them, but in the preliminary hearing for sure is not in on them. So you love the sound of my wind chimes. Nice. And the cars driving by dude, it's the weekend. The freaking weekend in the mountains, man. I should be on the river. It's probably packed. But I could have been on the river with my wife. Hesitantly, <laughs> she was going to allow me to come. If you're just joining, you can go back and watch the first five minutes. I haven't said anything different. I've only been going for 25. So, hey, you're still live. And you're back. I'm on the Woodland Park Underground YouTube right now because Dad with the Phone YouTube is in YouTube jail. But I will actually premiere this video on Dad with the Phone YouTube right after this finishes. So everybody's going to get it. Who gives a damn? She had a great camping trip, except it was wet. That was actually Isley's camping trip because it was her birthday. It was actually Isley's girls camping trip her birthday and they had a great time uh in the moment it was wet and rainy and soggy but after the fact those are always the best stories to tell anyway and so i know they're gonna have a great time they had a great time so it was good alex's phone pinged at the daybills property yes and that's actually you know that's metadata that's technology evidence that's real evidence physical evidence and so the question is, a phone ping doesn't determine who was with that phone, you know? And so as weird as it may sound, all three of them could have been there. Chad Daybell is the grave digger. That's all I'm saying. I don't give a shit if a phone pinged. I don't give a shit if pictures were taken and it was two unidentified males one of them's Chad Daybell. You don't dig graves and then you're a part of this three partner scheme and you're not part of it. You're out there knowing how to dig graves. You know how to handle a shovel. If you know someone who's never handled a shovel and someone who's handled a shovel, you can you can tell the difference. And so I'm betting Daybell is is on location when the graves are being dug covered up because he talks about it too they got him on that alone that's probable cause for me case closed let's go to trial let we'll take the the grave dig, digger to trial um now whether or not that's how they go about it i don't give sh it doesn't matter they're on his property it's it's going to be it's going to be him they pushed for some of this now um, the question will be the murder charges the murder charges I don't know I don't know who they're going to try to press those on I hope they press them on Lori and Chad but I think to press murder charges because the cops have already used some of this evidence to point to where the, the, the bodies were at. Uh, who knows? Maybe it depends. I don't know. They got bodies now, so they got a story they can tell. And if they can tell a story that Chad or Lori were a part of the murder, which I think they very much were, um, but I also think they very much had a hitman, Alex. So, but even if they had a hitman, they're still part of the murder. So, charge them all. I think they should charge Alex, Lori, and Chad with literally the same crimes across the board. Now, in fact, that they have all these. And by the way, 
none of this comes about if grandma and grandpa aren't screaming to the world. Meanwhile, Chad and Lori kicking it on the Hawaiian beaches. If grandma and grandpa aren't screaming to the world. Do I think Lori's the puppet master? You know, no. I think Chad Daybell's the puppet master. Why? Because I know Chad Daybell's type. Like he's the author. He's the spiritual guru. He's the one who's... Chad Daybell's type is no different than Epstein's type. Clinton's type, all the big dogs that are coming out as pedophile, child molester killers. This is no different than the Catholic priest pedophile cover-up. These are, these are the same type of people all across the board. They pray. Lori was a very complicit, very um, used part in Chad Daybell's scheme, but very complicit, very bought into, very sane, very insane, I should say, uh, part. I'm not trying to take anything away from her part in the in the thing, but I think uh, Chad Daybell is the mastermind, diabolical cult leader that you could ever make him out to be. At the worst of worst things, like the worst of the worst things you could ever say about anyone could actually be said about Chad Daybell. Now, if on some strange planet, Lori Daybell was hypnotized and completely brainwashed by Chad Daybell, and she snaps out of it and starts acting, right? But... I just don't see any of that. So I think she's just as complicit, just as compliant, just as guilty as Alex is, as Lori is. I think she is Chad Daybell's counterpart. I think they are counterparts to each other, but I think Chad is probably the quote unquote mastermind. He's the grave. He put him on his damn property. Nobody else is complicit to say, let's bury some bodies on my property unless they're the property owner and it's his idea, right? So nobody in their right mind, nobody in their sober mind, nobody in any frame of mind says, oh yeah, you're the mastermind. I'll bury the bodies on my property. No, nobody does that. Not a Chad Daybell, not a cult leader Chad Daybell. The only person who puts bodies on their own property, grave digger, mastermind, guilty some bitch. What else we got? Do I think he's done this before? I'm only asking because of his demeanor. Mm. I don't know. I mean, we got Tammy for sure. We got Alex. We got um, Charles. We got Tylee. JJ. That's who else has died? We got the attempted on the, the the other one. Who knows? Who knows? Hey, thanks for watching Down with a Phone. And if you were like, hey, you repeated yourself, you drug it out for 30 minutes, you did. If you have a negative comment, you can shove it. Because I told you, you could leave after five. Uh, if you have a positive comment, leave it below. Hit like and subscribe. And know that I wouldn't have done this video except for like six people asked me to.
So thanks for watching. Even you six people. We'll talk to you guys later.